Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge. I'm an educator in the Handy Quilter Studio. This is the 60 degree Handy Quilter Wedge. So you are going to like this. I'm going to show you all the different things or a lot of different things you can use with this. First thing I found with this is that this is a bigger ruler. So if you're using rulers at the top of your quilt, you need to allow for that. I've actually put a um, extra piece of fabric on here so that I don't have pins right at the top going along here so that when I put my ruler on it lays flat. So basically you can see it has some grid lines and I went ahead and I stitched across the first one which you're just going to follow that chevron shape that 60 degree angle and you can just stitch up and stitch back and move your ruler over. Then what I like to do on the way back is I really like to match make sure I know right where that center is. So I'm just using a ruler and this is an air erase marker that I'm just marking the center. So I'm just lining up with the point on there and putting a little uh, mark. So I'm going to line up my ruler and I have a line here that I'm going to put right on. So I can get my, get this ready. And once I'm lined up there, all right, we're going to go down. And then I'm just going to lay my hand flat. I like to have as much security there. And I like to make sure that this line straight, this line straight, this one is lining up with the center up here. I also have you know, so all these things that'll make sure that it lines up. So once I get there, then I can just move the ruler over and line up again. I have these guidelines down here and I have the top so I can line up this grid line on this side with so that it's on this side the same place. So if I just lay my hand down there, keep everything as much control on the ruler as you can which is nice to have all of this ruler because it gives you plenty of space to put your hand. And as you stitch that out, you can see that that makes a nice diamond. Now over on this side, you can see I've come back in and I've done an echo. So I put the ruler down here and then I can tell exactly where the center is. So I'm just putting my ruler right on the edge of that and coming in. I'll show you on this one how we did that. So I'm just going to line up the point, which is this grid here. I'm going to move over just a quarter of an inch so I can either use the ruler to kind of slide me over there. I can put my um, ruler so that it's gonna catch me when I get to the bottom. So it'll just stop there so I can then use the ruler to come back up the other side. So on these, I have done an echo on the inside at the top. So kind of that's the outside. And then I've got some over here on the other side that I'll, let me just demonstrate that one more time. So I'm coming across, I have that on a quarter inch. I've lined up the edge of that wedge so that it's just going to go right along the hopping foot. And I'm going to come down and I'm gonna hit this side of the wedge and then make sure I'm just right on my thread there so that I'm a quarter inch on that side. And then you can just keep going across the top and you can use the ruler, nice that it has those straight sides, you can use it to go across just until this side of the hopping foot touches Bring your wedge in. You can actually see how it just fits right in there. I'm trying to kind of juggle camera and ruler so you can see how it's just going to fit in there. Once it reaches there, then you can go back up. So I like this cute design, how it does that, and you can actually add some things in there. Okay, on this side over here, what I've done is I've echoed on the inside and then just traveled this way. So I've put my ruler right on the stitch line and then I can come down and then travel over.
and so you can see the difference in how it looks there. And you can see I have these little purple tapes. I always put those on sometimes just to help me remember which guideline I'm on. So that's echoing on the inside. Down here, this row is just a different size than this one, and you can see the difference in how it looks. This one I've come back and forth this way, and then I've added another one in between, which gives you three going across, which gives you another option. This one you can see filling in on the outside, the echo on the inside. And then over here, this is just the different size, and then echoing or filling in on the inside of those. You're gonna get a lot of different looks using this ruler. There's a lot of different ways you can use it. Okay, so on this side, I've stitched, and what you're going to find is you can do different sizes with this wedge. So the first one, I'm lining up. I have this down here that lines up with my channel, and then I've actually got the tape lined up here to remind me where I'm starting. So I am just going to do, um, so you have quarter inch sizes down the side. So this one will just go down. Now I'm in the tip of that wedge, which gives me a nice crisp point. That's the great thing about being on the, uh, having the wedge on the inside instead of having to come over the top. By being on the inside, you get that nice crisp point. So now I'm coming over a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put my ruler right on the hopping foot so I can figure out which one I'm going to line up with there. So we'll just come down. And you can either just sneak across there or you can move the ruler over and get the edge of it. But again, I'm using these markings on the ruler that help me to get that exactly so I can come down on the inside of there and just keep adding to the inside. So you can see how you can go across and you can get a design this way. You could add in this inside of he these if you want. The next one, this is one of my favorites, and this is the template to do it with. So this makes it work so easy to have that uh, wedge on the inside. All we're going to do on this one is follow the angle. So first stitch across and do your triangle shape or your chevron shape. And then I like to do about a quarter inch apart. So I'm going to go back down this way. So I'm going to follow the V shape. And I'm going to set my template on this side so it stops me right when I get to the stitching. So I'm just going to come down. And then I can follow that side of the ruler up. Move my wedge ruler, come back up. Just sneak along that guide, move my ruler up. I love that you have the ruler to help you on both sides of that. So you're just going across there. So you can just follow the wedge. Fill that in. So it just keeps going, then the next one goes the opposite direction. Okay, so my favorite thing about this was a trick I learned with this one. I'm just going to advance this just a little bit. Here's the difference. Is this is a bigger row, and look at the difference in how it looks. But on this one, I left off a few rows of stitching. And then I still came up this way, down this way, up this way, and it just looks like a ribbon going across there. I love how this looks on your quilt, just like a, I, I'm like wanting to make a quilt with that in the border. So if you don't do every single 
channel with your wedge ruler. You can leave some open and add different fills inside of there. So these are just some different things that add interest. There's your piano keys that bring it in. I love this ruler. So this one is such a new one. I only have one quilt to show you. And this is a triangle shape that you can kind of see the different channels and how you can fill those in and how that looks on a quilt. So there's a purple one and there's a different color. This is a great ruler. Lots of different things that you can do with it. So I hope you enjoy the wedge ruler.